coming up on Cardinals Insider. I know what it looks like. I know what it takes to not only get up here, but stay here. Get to know bench coach Ali Marmol. Plus, it's all, all handmade and hand done. And later, we really go through an extensive taste testing process. Time to eat. See how new concession items are developed. That and more ahead on Cardinals Insider. Hello and welcome to Cardinals Insider. I'm your host, Ozzie Smith. You've likely seen him standing next to Mike Schilt, but what else do you know about Oliver Marmol? In less than 15 years, Marmol has gone from minor league infielder to major league bench coach. Our Brett McMillan has more on Ollie's journey and new role in 2019. Cardinals bench coach Oliver Marmol doesn't have to look far to find his biggest professional influence. He was the one that suggested drafting me when he was on the, in the scouting department. He was my first hitting coach as a player and then um, came through the system kind of learning from him as far as how to be a good manager and, and come through the system that way. But between him, Mark DeJohn and Gary LaRock, they were very influential in me being where I'm at today. 2019 is his third season on the big league staff but his first as bench coach. Continuous conversation for the entire nine innings. You're just bouncing ideas back and forth off of each other. He's been formulating those ideas since the 2007 draft when the Cardinals picked him in the sixth round. Playing didn't work out. So in 2011, he began a different kind of baseball journey, coaching. As a manager in the minor leagues, you don't have a large staff, so a lot of the responsibility does fall on you. You have one hitting coach, one pitching coach, and that's about it. So uh, you learn the ins and outs of, of every aspect of the game. So as a bench coach now, just being able to bring some of that experience to Mike and stay ahead of, of the game inning by inning is going to be very beneficial. Mike Schilt is not the only long-term relationship he has in St. Louis. His first pro ball roommate also made it to the big leagues. We always had a good relationship when we play together and even as a staff member now, there's just been from the very beginning a very high level of trust and confidence there. Those attributes remain important to Marmol today, drawing on the successes and the struggles of his own journey as he helps to cultivate this 2019 roster. I enjoy the developing the skill and developing the just the overall culture of a clubhouse more so than I ever enjoyed playing. So I know what it looks like. I know what it takes to not only get up here, but stay here. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. The Blues finish up their regular season this weekend. Earlier this hockey season, Harrison Bader rocked his new powder blue jersey as he dropped the puck at Enterprise Center. Here's a look at the center fielder at center ice. How you guys doing? Good to see you guys. You know, obviously the unveiling of the, the powder blues is something that's really special and something that we haven't done in a long time. So, uh, you know, obviously as a, a young player, being a part of a movement like this, it's, it's very exciting and it's something I'm looking forward to. And, you know, those guys wore those, those colors really well and I'm just looking forward to just representing them the same exact way. Drop it. Drop it. Right now. Oh, big guy. Oh. I was saying, here we go. I mean, the first thought was obviously these guys are absolutely enormous. <laughs> a lot of it has to do with the with the skates, but um, I mean, just just being on the ice with, with those athletes obviously is uh, something special. And um, you know, again, I've never experienced anything like it. Ah, great job by Harrison Bader. Definitely a hockey fan. Definitely a fan of the game. I, I mean, it's a great game. You know, obviously being from New York, I have I have MSG, so that in and of itself is a great experience. But. Um, growing up, I loved the Rangers, and uh, you know, being in St. Louis and being how you know prevalent hockey is, it's uh, it's really really cool to be a part of this. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, have a good rest of your break. Yeah, yeah. They were super welcoming, and I appreciate all all the love they give, and I'm I'm throwing it right back. So I'm wishing them best luck throughout the season. That's awesome. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. Really, in in our process, we try to eliminate all negative variation. And still to come. Everything in these burgers is so St. Louis. Ever wonder how your favorite ballpark foods are invented? We'll show you later on in the show.
Let's continue with this story from the Cardinals Insider Team. I have the greatest job in the world. I get to design and develop baseball gloves. What's required for, for this job is a, is a passion and a love for the game and for baseball equipment. It's still very much, you know, handmade. Every, every single step in the process has to be touched by someone. Um, there really are no robots making a glove or cutting the pieces. It's, it's all, all handmade and hand done. So variation from glove to glove is okay, as long as it's not a flaw or a, a defect in any way. There are pretty much undetectable changes, but there will be, I like to call them kind of artistic nuances from one glove to another. One may feel slightly different or maybe lay slightly tighter or looser, um, but really in, in our process we try to eliminate all negative variation and it, it really contributes to that handcraftedness and the, the beauty of, of the finished product. Probably my favorite part of the glove making process is right at the beginning when you're cutting a glove and you're, you're full of excitement, you're visualizing how they're going to come together, if they're going to come together. You know, you're wondering already about some of the potential hiccups you could encounter along the way. Your mind's racing about everything that's going to happen in the next 10 to 16 hours. <laughs> Whether it's cosmetic or whether it's an you know an overhaul of, of what a glove is, that's that's kind of my role is to think about tomorrow, but also think about five years from now, six years from now, ten years from now, um, and what a baseball glove is going to look like. Straight ahead, we get to serve. They get to taste what makes us great. We get in the Cardinals kitchen and show you how new ballpark foods are born. Plus, when I put the jersey on, the birds on the bat, it, it felt like nothing I ever put on before. We'll check in with Cardinals alum Woody Williams. That's all ahead on Cardinals Insider. Have you listened to the Cardinals Insider podcast yet? Each week, the show welcomes players, executives, and alumni. Plus, hear audio from the Cardinals radio archives. Take Cardinal baseball with you on the Cardinals Insider podcast. Listen or subscribe wherever you get your podcast or at cardinals.com slash podcast. The pitch by Izzy on its way. Call third strike and the Cardinals win it 2-1. to one. And Jason Isringhausen is the all-time saves leader in Cardinal history. Number 161 in his St. Louis career. Who will get a red jacket next? Vote at cardinals.com slash HOF. When you come to Bush Stadium this year, you'll see a brand new scorecard design. Each season, Cardinal Publications rolls out a new look for this baseball classic, and this year's edition just debuted. Some of the best interactive themes have come when we celebrate the competition. Of course, the Central Division rivalry this year, it's going to be more intense than ever. And so we thought we'd get the mascots of the other central opponents in there. Just from his early sketches there when we met over lunch, he knew he was going to deliver something big. For this year, we wanted to focus on the fans. We got a little playful with it and had us cheering like we're watching the game, whereas the other division mascots are being sad or, you know, we're getting in their way or annoying them. Mike is a, uh, our scorecard illustrator, is a, a great talent who really has a flair for capturing that 1950s, early 60s aura of the classic Cardinal scorecard. I just always thought it was much more colorful and popped and was a lot more fun, a lot more gesture to it and uh, you could have a lot of fun with the character and everything. We kind of look at these things as a souvenir and even if you don't keep score with it, a lot of fans, they'll buy a scorecard to have as a keepsake for a particular season. They'll add it to their collection. So if you're not keeping score, it's, it's a nice uh, memory piece to have. Nothing beats ballpark food, but do you ever wonder how they come up with the new food concepts each year? 
We went inside the kitchen for this week's Cooking with the Cardinals. We really go through an extensive taste testing process, trying different things, what kind of concepts what we think people would like. So it's really important for us to, just like any other restaurant, is to do the taste testing. And so today we did a large taste testing, probably one of our final ones, as we put together the new Burger Bar concept for 2019. Everyone likes to have a cold Budweiser, everyone would like a nice burger, put the two together, it's a perfect marriage. So now taking all of that thought process and bringing it here to the St. Louis Cardinals and creating something that's unique for them and solely them, I mean, that's just an opportunity for, for Budweiser as well as the Cardinals to really have a really cool culinary collaborative and make something that's unique and special for St. Louis. The fact that we're actually using Budweiser being the local beer. Uh, well, of course, Budweiser is national, but for us, it's here. So everything in these burgers is so St. Louis. You know, we get the Budweiser in the beer. We get the Budweiser inside of the bun. We get the St. Louis style cheese, which we can only get here. We got toasted ravioli. All of these things mixed together make St. Louis. So when you have your, your Dodger fans, your Yankee fans, even them, them guys from Chicago come down, we get to serve, they get to taste what makes us great outside of the baseball team. We want to give that hop up at the terrace and give it a Budweiser Burger Bar. We came up with a lot of ideas, you know, just not to only do something Bud infused, but let's feature a little bit of St. Louis or all of St. Louis as much as we can. The Budweiser Burger Bar is intended to be a completely different concept than anything in the ballpark. It's really a restaurant within the ballpark. So it has very unique craft burgers and we have been working with Anheuser-Busch for months and months now to come up with some really nice craft burgers that will be a really appealing to fans and really make this location in Bud Terrace a destination point for fans when they come to the ballpark. It's time for this week's trivia question. Alum Woody Williams returns to Bush Stadium for a Bud Bash on September 3rd. He's also the topic of this week's trivia question. Who did the Cardinals trade in exchange for Woody Williams? Was it Placido Polanco, Brian Jordan, Ray Lankford, or Tom Pagnozzi? The answer after the break. We're back with the answer to this week's trivia question. We ask who the Cardinals traded to acquire Woody Williams. The answer is Ray Lankford. The Padres sent Williams to the Cards on August 2, 2001. He resigned with St. Louis as a free agent the following November. Here's more on Woody's time as a Redbird. I just think it was the first night, first night I pitched. Coming off that field to a standing ovation, I was like, wow. They appreciate what they, they saw. They appreciate baseball. And that's the reason that I played, is, is just to, to try to perform the best I could and have someone appreciate it as much as they did. It was uh, very special. If anybody can do it, Rick Ankiel can. Uh, the guy is an athletic freak. He can dunk a basketball with half of his arm over the rim. He can hit a golf ball nine miles. Uh, you know how he can throw a baseball. You know how he can hit a baseball. Him working through everything that he has you know, how many, how many players in, in the major leagues have, have done both exceptionally well? Not very many. And he's very, very gifted, and I'm pulling for him. Are going. The hit and run is on, and it's going to be a triple play. Out number two, and out number three, an unassisted triple play. You know, in the moment, you really don't think about it. You know, there's first and second no outs. Tony put a hit and run on, and I hit the ball very good, and, and Rafael Fercal jumped up and made a great catch, and and the rest is history. And I look back now, it cost me a win. You know, if, if he wouldn't have caught the ball, we win the, win the ball game, you know. Uh, I don't remember the final score of that game, but it was, uh, you know, looking back now, it's kind of, kind of funny. When I put the jersey on, the birds on the bat, it, it felt like nothing I ever put on before. It was just a special feeling. It felt like I was home. And, uh, you know, as I look back on my career, you know, I wouldn't change anything. But if I could change something and needed to, it would be the fact that I would get here sooner. Coming up next. It's a very exclusive experience, but one that we're really proud to be able to offer. Did you know you can host a party at Bush Stadium? 
we show you what a cardinal event looks like. Bush Stadium hosts 81 games a year plus playoffs, but there's so much more that happens here at the ballpark. Here's a look at the recent event put on by the Cardinal Special Events team. We do a lot of client events um, throughout the year. Uh, we really appreciate our clients, and so we want to show that we appreciate them by doing some unique, are really the special events, the unique events, and the Cardinals really offers us that. We have 46 people attending our Bats and Apps event. We uh, have our reception in the clubhouse, and then we're going to the batting cages to see how professional we can be, and amateur I can be. Um, in the batting cages and then the, um, we get to go out to the outfield and just get a little tour of the locker room. But the batting cages are open. Have fun, be safe, don't get hit by a ball. Tonight LHM is giving their clients the opportunity to have an experience batting in the clubhouse cages where the St. Louis Cardinals team also takes batting practice. Did you get that one? <laughs> This is a very exclusive experience. It's not something that we um, have the ability to offer to everyone. It's not even available all throughout the year, obviously, because that's this is where the team is playing for the majority of the year. So we're really happy to be able to offer something so special and so exclusive for such a special partner of ours. <laughs> a really great event for our customers. Get them out of the sunlight in the AC. Great food, great drinks, great people. It's a great time. I gotta loosen up real quick. <laughs> it seems like the buildings across the street from Bush Stadium grow every day. If you haven't been downtown recently, here's what's happening with Phase 2 of Ballpark Village and One Cardinal Way. We're getting to see the finish line here. The PwC Pennant Building office building uh, is topped out, glass is going up. The Live by Lowe's Hotel is about a floor away from topping out. So a lot of exciting progress. One Cardinal Way, we're up to the 10th story, already 30% leased. Uh, expect that building to be 100% full when it opens in early summer of 2020. And a lot of work left to do, but we're, we're rolling. It's on a pace now of going up about a floor every week to 10 days. So it's really starting to move. And I think what'll be fun is fans will see that additional progress as the season unfolds. So I think there's a sense of optimism downtown that you know we're investing in downtown, we're investing in the team, and the future looks good. We expect to not only continue with phase three and four of Ballpark Village, but also to see a lot of development around us and a lot of excitement and energy in downtown, which uh, was really the point of, of, of all of the efforts. It's a true neighborhood and creates that density, that foot traffic, that activity that makes this feel like it's not just a place to come see an event or baseball game, it's a place to live, it's a place to work, it's a place to have fun and to just be down here. When we return... 80 home games, you will get a uh, standing room ticket delivered to your smartphone. It's the least expensive way to see almost every home game. Stay with us. Taking in a Cardinals game is a summer staple for fans across Cardinal Nation. The Budweiser Ballpark Pass allows access to 80 games for a flat monthly rate. Here's more on the program making Cardinal baseball more accessible than ever. The Budweiser Ballpark Pass allows you to go to as many home games as you want, even at the last minute. Enjoy views from all over the ballpark, including the Budweiser Terrace. Back again by popular demand for the third year is the Budweiser Ballpark Pass. That's our subscription product and you pay $29.99 per month and that gets you access to every Cardinals home game except for opening day. You'll get access to 80 home games including Cards Cup Series and other high demand weekends. 
You don't have to decide in advance whether you want to attend the game. You'll have that ticket delivered to your smartphone before every home game. Whether you choose to use it or not is up to you. Tickets are available on the MLB Ballpark app. So as long as you have your phone, you have your ticket. It's a standing room ticket. So really anywhere in the ballpark that we have standing room areas, which really we have multiple options on every level of the ballpark. The one that we tie the most closely with the Budweiser Ballpark Pass is the Budweiser Terrace, which is our social area in right field that we opened last year and was really popular with fans but there are multiple other areas throughout the ballpark on various levels. A standing room ticket will get you access to. Fans are free to move around the various options to find a perfect spot for viewing the game. So whether you want to go to eight games or come to all 80, the Budweiser Ballpark Pass is your never ending ticket. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. Thanks for joining us on Cardinals Insider. This episode is almost over, but our content is always online. Visit cardinals.com slash insider or the club's YouTube page for full episodes and individual stories. That's it for this week. We'll see you at the ballpark.